hey and welcome to the channel it has been quite a while since i've done something like this and i'm going to give you a little bit of a tour of one of my old sketchbooks and also try and create something new in that sketchbook as well it has been a very very long time since i've used a sketchbook most of the drawing that I do in sketchbooks was on holiday, which this book has a load of sun cream stains on, which is what are all these white bits all over the front. So let's have a look inside. Nothing on the first pages for some reason. Here we've got a small charcoal sketch. Hopefully you can see that. I toyed with the idea of these wild animals in some city scenes. This was a good few years back now. I'm not even sure how long ago these were done. But this is just in charcoal. Another one of a fox in that city scene with the bouquet light effect. And then a tiger piece. This was done in oils in a different sketchbook that I decided to stick in because I wanted all these pieces in one place. This sketchbook isn't at all just like stuck to this theme. This is just a place for me to have a little bit of fun and do what I want to do. There's wildlife, there's observational drawings, there's portraits, there's all sorts in here. Another one of a deer. Again, just a very, very quick, rough oil painting sketch done on the same paper. This is a moleskin sketchbook, by the way. Fantastic paper for painting on. Doesn't really warp that much. And it doesn't leak through either. Then the same or a very similar fox, just with a slightly different street. I never actually got around to painting these pictures, but it is a theme or a series that I might do in the future. And then back to the more stereotypical wildlife a little bit. So we've got a tiger portrait again done with charcoals. We've got another lioness, or a, a lioness, we've not done one yet. Again done with charcoal. I primarily use charcoal in these sketchbooks. That was like my go-to medium when I started out, going back to my roots. Um, some form of, I think this was supposed to be a bear, but it looks more like a bear slash wolf hybrid with ginormous eyes that are clearly way too big for this massive, or small, or round head, depending on whether it's a wolf or a bear. Not sure what that one is. Oh, and this was done in 2019. So that was what? four years ago, which is absolutely mental. I've not touched this sketchbook since 2019, which, wow, that, that is a, a long time ago. Then, got some portraits. I don't just do animals. I can do people sometimes as well. Lion. I just love putting these, like, abstract lines and abstract marks in. I just think it makes the sketches look a little bit more, more interesting. Wolf, spread over a double page spread. I do freehand all of these, they're not traced or anything, this is just... It's not really for showing people, but I thought I'd show you anyway, just so you could have a look. Um, a bison slash buffalo. And then, this was when I was into watching Game of Thrones. So we've got a little bit of Jon Snow here. Let's see if you can have a bit of a closer look at that on the other camera. There he is. This is actually probably one of my better portraits in terms of capturing a person's likeness. I do actually really like this picture and for considering this was four years ago, pretty impressed with how it looks. Got another one. Like you can tell who it is, but I don't know if I've quite caught the likeness properly with this one. Not as much as the previous one. But I do enjoy doing portraits as well as animals. It's just... 
it's hard to get around to doing the portraits and if I'm being very honest they don't do as well on YouTube and they don't do as well on Instagram for me so I've just sort of forced myself down a niche of painting and drawing wildlife. Here's a little leopard sketch. And deer. There's no stories really behind these pictures. I, I wish there was a little bit more of a story. I mean, there might be a little bit of a story behind this one. Um, this is actually an observational drawing from when I went to France on a fishing trip. And you've actually got a little bit of some fishing rods here underneath this tree. And I do actually think that this tree, I, I can actually remember and visualise where this tree was. It was in the centre of Paris on a park lake. Um, and this was where I caught my first, I think it was my first 40 pound carp from this lake. So the, I guess this one does have a little bit of a memory behind it. This was some form of lion that very quickly became a pigeon that I was looking at. Super interesting fishing trip. And then we've got some just like half done sketches that never really got around to, to finishing. This was just the base layer and then on top of this there would have been a raising and then darker sections and then a little bit of abstract splashing but sometimes you get pictures like this. I used to, when I did sketch, sketch for about half an hour and then get a little bit bored, so I'll move on to something else. And that is Malam Tarn in 2019. This is actually a school trip that I ran um, in 20... Oh, was it? Yeah, school trip that I ran in 2019 to Malam Tarn, which is in Yorkshire. Anyone doesn't know. Lovely, beautiful place. Really nice walks. Really nice views. Uh, and yeah, that was a that was a great trip. And then we're on to some more of that stereotypical wildlife. A little bit of a lion. I have a problem, and I noticed this problem quite a lot with my freehand sketches. Is I tend to make the eyes way too big, huge which gives everything a little bit of a cartoonish look and it, yeah, it's something that I need to correct with my freehand drawings. Got a little bit of a tiger sketch here. I don't ever really fix anything in this book. I probably should, but I do actually quite like the marks that it makes on the opposite page. I think they are like artworks in of themselves. Here's what I was talking about, about an unfinished one. This was going to be a chimpanzee, but yeah, nothing. And I actually think I prefer this side more than this side. Bit of a gorilla. This probably was a finished sketch. Like, looking back at this now, there is so much that I would do differently. I would bring out more highlights, add a little bit more variation in the tones. But otherwise, it, it's, it's an okay drawing. Here's another one. Well, I think this was actually two. There's a little bit of a sketch over here that you can see, and I think that was a preliminary sketch for this one. I don't think it was from life, but I can't remember where the reference photo was from. But this was sort of when I started understanding how to work with charcoal a little bit better. That it wasn't necessarily all about details, that you do have to push the values and use those subtleties in values to your advantage. Another little freehand portrait sketch. This was probably done on a plane. Don't know what plane, but from one of the in-flight magazines because that is what I used to do when I didn't have reference when I sat on planes, just pick up the in-flight magazines and sketch from them. I got lots and lots of free things for flight attendants when I was growing up because of my drawings. I keep doing it now, but yeah, doesn't quite work anymore. Not quite as cute as I was. You can flip over, got a little boxer over here, and then another tiger. Not amazing, this was trying to use a different type of charcoal, which just got a little bit too dark, and I just got a little bit carried away with that dark colour. So I don't quite like this as much as the subtle ones, like the gorilla before. 
Here I am trying to play a little bit more with my line work. So I'm trying to, almost like comic book style-esque, trying to really, really focus on where I want those sharp, harsh lines. I really like went carried away with this, overboard with those lines. This isn't how I would do it really, but there is something about having these really, really distinct, really, really heavy handed lines that go on the page that's really satisfying when you're creating sketches like this. Got a little bit of the snow leopard. This was sort of knocking it back to a little bit more subdued, but I still had those harsh lines in there when I was drawing it, when I was sketching it out. But then they got knocked back as the drawing sort of built up. But it's still taking some of the things that I learned from the previous pages and applying them to this page. Flip over. I think we're actually nearing the end of this sketchbook or the end of where I got up to with this sketchbook. Here's another lion, again, experimenting with those lines, those edges, but just starting to understand that a little bit more. And then flipping over, I think this is the last one. Just a small little sketch. This would probably have taken 10, 10 15 minutes to do, nothing major. Um, but yeah, that is the end of the sketchbook. But that is not the end of the video. Because what I'm actually going to do is something that I wish I had more time to do. I'm actually just going to sketch. I'm going to sketch something new in the sketchbook for you guys to watch and show you my process of how I do that. As I said, I don't really feel like I've got the time to work in a sketchbook very often anymore. Well, I haven't for the last four years. This is my own fault really, as I fell into a bit of a trap where I thought every single one of my pieces has to be saleable. I forced myself into believing that sketching was a waste of time. Why work in a sketchbook when I could be working on something I could be trying to sell? This is a terrible attitude to have as a beginner or even a professional artist. Sometimes, as a creative person, you just need to create for the sake of creating, regardless of time or money. If you think too much about both of those things, then you end up going down this rabbit hole in terms of what your art looks like, what you think your art should look like, which isn't necessarily the way that you want or wanted your art to actually be. My advice is to free up a little bit of time each week to sketch, draw, experiment and have a bit of fun. Create something for you that nobody else is going to see. Go wild and enjoy the process rather than focusing on that end product. That's what I did here. I started off loose with charcoal powder, spreading it over the page, then refined slightly using the blending stump, almost sculpting the subject out of the charcoal. I then used a putty eraser to remove some of that charcoal, and I'm really trying to focus more on the big shapes and values rather than tiny details. It's then just about refining those shapes until you're happy with them, using darker charcoal, charcoal pencils, and different erasers to achieve varied and interesting marks. I could have spent hours refining this drawing, making the proportions more accurate and adding tiny strands of fur to produce a more photorealistic drawing. But that's not what my sketchbook is for. It's for these quick 20 to 30 minute sketches to get ideas down, plan future drawings, or just to remember why I became an artist in the first place. Because it's fun. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about my charcoal process and the tools that I use in my large charcoal drawings, then why not check out this video. 
as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.